Well, my father is a little bit of a Renaissance man. He is a cardiologist. He also has a law degree and he also studied the violin. It wasn't necessarily planned, but one of his children became a cardiologist. One of his children was a lawyer who then became a nurse and one of his children became a violinist. I grew up in a very musical household. We always had solo string music happening in our house. Um, some of my fondest memories are of going to sleep and hearing my father playing violin in the next room, just working through a piece of Bach, or hearing my brother practice. And I remember my sister saying once when we were having a family visit and I was playing the violin, she said, you know, this is the, one of the things that I miss so much about living together and growing up together is hearing music in the house all the time. So for us, it's very personal, uh, the music of, of Bach. It was the soundtrack to our upbringing. I chose this particular movement by Bach for a couple of reasons. One, I have always found it hauntingly beautiful. Um, but when I dig a little deeper and ask myself why it's beautiful, for me, this particular piece is unique in that there is a song happening. And underneath that song is a very steady, rhythmic ostinato that stays for almost the entire piece. It's always been a little bit of a metaphor to me about something that's usually performed by two people suddenly having to be performed by one person. This sense of isolation um, and you're trying to breathe beauty and life into this dark space. You know, one of the hardest questions during all of this is when will I see my sister, my brother, my father, my mother, when will I see any of them again? You know, music has always been something that brought us all together. And even though I'm all the way across the country, um, I know they'll see this and they'll know uh, when they hear that that's you know th this is this is for them
Yes. Martha? Hi. 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 <laughs> I'm so glad you could, could zoom in for this. So you remember before VCRs or streaming services how we had to catch movies on the TV? <laughs> and every year before Christmas, we always made sure we saw The Wizard of Oz. Right. Right. So I know you've lived, in, you've lived in another state, but you know I've lived in lots of other states. And I cannot tell you how many times when people find out where I'm from, they say, Toto, we're not in Kansas anymore. Oh, right, right, yes. I know. so many times. Um, so I think, it, I don't know when, I'll be able to like click my ruby slippers and hug you for real and visit. But um, in the meantime, I want to serenade you with my own arrangement of one of our favorite songs. Um, I think it really speaks to this moment and how much we all miss certain things and how much we all long for brighter days to come, you'll recognize it. Okay. So here are a few words about Keep in Touch. Um, it's functionally a duet between a viola and the human voice, uh, here written for Nadia Sorota and Anoni. But the way that I constructed it was that neither of them knew what the other one was going to be doing. And in fact, um, Anoni's voice was recorded sort of out of time with the track, um, and I gave her enormous freedom to make these kind of vertical arrangements of how things were going to work, and then took them apart and placed them in other places that worked around the viola line. So in a sense, you have people in two different rooms very unaware of one another. I don't think Nadia heard what Anoni was going to do until much, much, much closer to the premiere. It was the last week of May when I was listening to the Nico Muli piece and thinking about the kind of dark quality of those disparate musical elements. And that was the weekend the George Floyd protest started and I drove downtown to see what was happening. And as I drove past the square in front of the federal courthouse building, I held my iPhone camera in slow motion out the window 
And when I got home, I just looked at the footage and saw the elk statue looking over all those militarized officers. And I just felt like, you know, sometimes circumstances create a connection.
Thank you so much for watching our sixth episode of Essential Sounds. It's been such a privilege to contribute to the creation of this great project during these extraordinary times. For this episode, the Oregon Symphony is partnering with the Maybell Community Center, an organization dedicated towards disrupting social isolation and making our community whole. Since 1991, the Maybell Center has built a more vibrant Portland by collaborating with residents in more than 30 buildings in the downtown area who face barriers to meaningful connection so that more of us can experience a healthy, connected life and contribute to a thriving city. There's a link at the bottom of your screen where you can learn how you can support this mission and find out more about this great group. For our final performance, I'll be singing you a song that I wrote and it's been arranged by Gabriel Kahane and performed by members of the Oregon Symphony. I hope you'll hear it as a love letter from Portland, Oregon, where all is well. The bar closed and the whole day went Not much to your liking Fresh rain on the beer green glass Broken were your biking A dark cloud over your bed You're so sad that you just might die But the sun will still rise The sun will still rise It just might be a soft curve in your heart line. There's no doubt that you are mine, babe. No, there's no doubt that you are mine. You act so shy, but you know you're pretty. You act like there's no one left. Alive in the whole city Well maybe the end is upon you And what then here? Repeat after me It goes I won't stop loving I won't stop loving You don't have to be perfect You don't have to play
Hang in there.